Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's it doing? How's it going? Hope everybody's having a great day. I guess she says she's always in her kitchen. Yes, I'm in my kitchen because the lighting in my kitchen is better to me. Well, other areas are great too, but I spend a lot of time in my kitchen. I enjoy my kitchen. I think most women enjoy their kitchens and they like uh, to make videos in the kitchen and the bathroom, but I don't make a video in the bathroom. Anyway, it is wonderful February, which is Black History Month, and I love Black History Month because I did not experience Black History Month growing up. Black History Month did not come about, well, it came about right after I got out of high school, but all my years in school, there was no Black History Month. Um, we talked about things of black pioneers and role models and martyrs that died for the cause, but it didn't really become official until 1975, observing, then the first uh, memoration, commemoration was established by, I think it was uh, Gerald Ford and 76, somewhere around now, you can look it up. But anyway, it's important to me. I guess you wonder why is this woman talking about this brown paper bag? Okay, and the video is entitled, Brown Bag Skin Test. I'm not gonna go into it. I want you to look it up, but I don't want you to read it. If it's important to you, you'll understand why. But the significance of this paper brown paper bag and what relevance does it have uh, with me of this video why do I relate to this bag why did this bag bring back memories to me it is because I grew up in Atlanta doing Jim Crow okay that's the truth that's the truth that's the truth and the truth shall set you free and it's not about bashing anybody because we're all part of what I call the human race. Okay, so this is for the human race. No matter what uh, race you relate to, what you call yourself, what do you think you are, how do you live, what type of person you live as. You live as a black person, a white person, or red, yellow, black, and white. We all oppress in God's sight. And I know you think that's suspect with a lot of other people, but that's the truth. So I live in the truth, and I go by the truth, okay? All right, let's get back to this paper bag here. This paper bag is very useful to me. I've always bought paper bags because I use them to shake. Um, you're going to make chicken. I use them a lot of times because my mom used them to shake uh, uh, culture chicken or your meat, whatever. And I also use it when I coat my chicken for my air fryer, when I fry in the oven or in my air fryer. This bag was also used in back in the day by uh, our people to do the brown bag skin test. Because if you did not meet this test, you were not allowed to participate in a lot of uh, clubs owned by black people or anything. I'm not going to spoil it for you. I want you to read about it. There's a lot of history in this brown paper bag sack. And it made a big difference. So you can see why it was important and bring back memories. Also, when I was in high school, it's a quick story. When I was in high school, I was nominated. I was a grade queen. There were your uh, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade, great uh, queens, but they also had great queens for like the eighth grade queen. And I was a great queen for the eighth grade. Now, I barely made it because they didn't, it was not, they didn't actually time when I was in school, put the pad, bag up to your face and make sure your skin was this color or lighter, but it was, it was uh, not spoken, it was unspoken rule. Because back then, all your majorettes and your cheerleaders were either brown paper bag color or lighter. Okay? And I thought about it. I said, 
I looked at my hand this morning. I said, okay. Yeah, suspect. <laughs> you know, anyway, but I put it up to my face. You, I'm not going to show my face this morning, okay? Trust me. I put it uh, up to my face, especially my neck area, and I was this color, okay? So that's why I probably was one of the grade queens. They nominated me in the class. Let's be for real. Um, and I experienced all that stuff, okay? Tell you more later. But for the purpose of this video, this is what it's about. This brown paper bag. And New Orleans, let me look it up. It's a lot of history. Uh, this happened a lot in New Orleans as well. It's very significant you understand this because you need to know why it's important for us as a race of people to be proud of who you are and to stick together because uh, you heard me say something about a village, and I live that. This old African saying about it takes a village. It came from, I don't really want to quote it, misquote it, but about a village. It took a village, and that was an African culture where everybody helped each other. And, you know, if I had food, you had food, and that's what I grew up with. Because my mom was born in 1916, and my dad was born in 1906. And the reason I know that, because my dad was 10 years older than my mom. I think I got the math right. So I heard a lot of stories about what it was like and um, all kinds of, most of them were horror stories. I hate to say it. Some were good, some were happy, and some were just notorious, gruesome. And uh, so that's life. So I think it's important that you and we as parents take responsibility for the oral uh, history that we experience and what our parents told us and that you're living to our children, to our generation. And there's still a sense of pride in them. Learning the history is our responsibility to our children. And I was in, uh, conscious of this when I raised my children. I never taught my children about um, that's just me. I never taught my children about the fairy godmother. Never taught my children about uh, Santa Claus uh, and all those kind of things because uh, it's important for them to know the truth. The truth shall set you free. And I think until we're able to have this conversation and to know that we are not most black people, uh, people of color, we don't hate. Uh, all the stories my mom told us when they taught us about the rules about the back of the bus and about uh, the water fountain. Yes, white and colored. Not white and black, but white and colored water fountains, okay? Because it was for your safety. And when you got on the bus, we went to the back of the bus. And you had to learn those rules, even as a young child, okay? Because mom and dad didn't want to go to jail. So they taught us the rules. They listen, okay? But doing all that ugliness and all that Jim Crow, all those rules, all that segregation, we were never taught to hate them. We were taught that they're narrow-minded, ignorant people. Now, I'm just telling you what my mama taught us, okay? But not to hate them, but to pity them, okay? And she always told us, you are just as good as anybody else, if not better. So there was discrimination. And I never met any other person of color until I was grown. That's how segregated we are. We had stores in the city and we had stores in our neighborhood. But the store we had in our neighborhood was ran by this Jewish man. And it's not, I don't know about all Jewish people, but he was kind. And that was the thing my mom always said, that she would rather work for the Jewish people because they seemed to be more... The ones she knew were more uh, empathetic uh, toward her struggle. So I don't know, there's good, there's bad, um, but I'm talking about truth right now, what I experienced. So this brown paper bag brought back a lot of memories because I'm very conscious of it. It's now Black History Month, okay? Now, people always say, why don't we forget about that? You can't forget history because I'm telling you something, guys. History can repeat itself. We have become so educated. We're rich, a lot of us. You know, we're doing, not rich, some of us, financially, stay financially, 
uh, stable. But honey, I'm telling you something. The storm is coming. The storm is coming. You need to take stock. You need to be conscious of what's going on. You need to know a little of something about politics. I'm amazed at the young people that say, well, I'm not going to fool with that. You people, talking about the older generation, we need to stop hating on each other and come together. You need to look at your financial status. You need to look at uh, your financial legacy. What are you going to leave for your children and your grandchildren if you're in that position? If it's nothing but $1,000, honey, if you got something, help these young folks out. Help them out. Teach them, instill a sense of pride in who they are. Now, I know we've all mixed. I get that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not talking about that. But if you are in a family and you are of mixed heritage and cultures, and we all are the human race, of color, allow your children to learn the history. It's important, guys. And I'm going to tell you one little quick story. You remember, I, I remember the scene in the color purple. I remember, I like the first color purple. I, I saw the second color purple. It's good for the young people, but I think I'm kind of biased for the second color, first color purple, and that's my opinion. I'm entitled to my opinion, and I'm a right to my opinion because it, I, I could relate to the scene where um, the young lady said, a female ain't safe. You know what, guys? You all probably thought they're just a line in a, in, a, in a movie scene. But my mom used to say this all the time growing up. I did not know what she meant. She used to say a female, a girl child ain't safe in the family when she was growing up. That's what she would say. A girl child wasn't safe in the family when I was growing up. That's all she would say. And then she would tell stories about how her stepfather tried to... Uh, molest her, you know, that's what she said. She didn't say the word molest. She said, my, my stepfather tried to mess with me, get with me. That's what she said. Those were her words, mess with me and get with me. I didn't get that, but I heard that story all the time, all the time. So when I became an adult and I started looking at the um, ancestry doing my family tree, I was looking, following my mom and her two sisters. It was three of them at that time. The brother wasn't born. And I was, you know, hey, followed the census, 1910, 1920, and then I'm getting to the 1930 census. And I see my grandmother and I see my aunt, because the youngest sister wasn't born. And I said, where's mom? I said, she has to be about, if my aunt here is 12, 11 or 12, my aunt has to be about 16 or 17. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, and I'm researching, I go back. Uh, I knew my grandfather's name, and I found my grandparents, and they had their name. And in the household, living with them, was my mother. And it says age 16. That was important to me because my mom said that she went, her stepfather, was trying to get with her, mess with her, she went to live with her grandparents. Now, granted, I'm going to be honest here. Sometimes I would think maybe that was a made-up story or was it a little, maybe she had too much little drink at that time or whatever, but that was etched in her mind. That memory was there. And when I saw that on the census where my mother was at this time when she was around the same age of 16, she wasn't in the household with her stepdad and her. Her mother, my grandmother, the story was true. Guys, I started bawling because I said, Mom was telling the truth. So that scene in The Color Purple is very true. It's very relevant. It's an ugly reality. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that because it helped me to understand more what my mom was talking about. Do your research, guys. Know what's going on. Learn how to vote. Go vote. It's important that we put people in place that's going to do the right thing for all people, and especially people of color. Okay? So it's not meant to hurt anybody or offend anyone. It's just that my experience is share with you why Black History Month is important to me. 
I know this is a long video. Maybe you can just put it on while you're cooking or cleaning up or whatever you do. But I just want to share. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. And please share. And I promise not to be so long-winded the next time. Okay? Bye-bye.